Sean Haney here with RealAgriculture.com and Real Ag Radio. You can hear every day on Rural Radio 147. I am joined right now by David Coletto with Abacus Data. He is the CEO of Abacus Data. How's it going today, David? Well, Sean, how are you doing? I'm doing good, doing good. Okay, uh, recent uh, survey of Canadians trying to sort out how they feel about COVID-19, the perceptions of this uh, health pandemic. You, a lot of economists have been talking about, you know, um, the flattening of the economic curve. We've heard health officials talk about flattening of, uh, you know, the case curve. You've been looking at the worry curve. What, what trend are you seeing? Well, we're, we've been tracking how concerned Canadians are about COVID-19, and, and we saw uh, a very rapid rise in the number of people saying they're they're extremely or, or worried a lot about the pandemic. And it reached a peak in early April at around 41% of the country saying they are most intently concerned. Most Canadians are concerned to some extent, but or almost all of them are. But it's that 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 most acute feeling that that I'm most interested in because it has such a big effect on so many behaviors and attitudes. And what we've actually started to see is not only is that curve flattened in terms of fewer Canadians, you know, worrying more and more about this, but it's actually turning the other way now. And our most recent survey that we finished last week found the numbers down to 34. So it's still a lot of Canadians very worried about this. But I think for some, it feels like we're turning a corner and the, the intense anxiety, the intense uh, anxiousness that this is creating is perhaps subsiding and we're moving maybe into, I think we're now into a, the next phase of this where at first it was a reaction. It was, I don't know what's going on. I'm worried about my health. I'm worried about my family. I'm worried about whether I have enough food in the house. And now I think we're more coping with it. And, and mm-hmm. those that haven't lost their job or haven't been economically affected in the short term are feeling a little bit better. But those who, who are really nervous about either their health or the economic insecurity that this is creating um, remain quite concerned, but there's fewer of them today than maybe there were a few weeks ago. It, it really does. When I when I looked at the data, it, I, I wonder how big of a how big the pressure it puts on health officials to try to keep social distancing in place while people are becoming less concerned or less worried. I think that those two things work against each other, don't you think? They do. And I think people's people takes people take a lot of cues from health officials, political leaders, those that we're watching, you know, every day giving us signals to how this crisis is unfolding. And I think we're starting to hear more and more, whether from Canadian officials, whether from World Health Organization officials, even whether from American officials who have a big influence on Canadians because we're consuming so much media from the states is that we have reached the peak or the curve is flattening, that we're going to start thinking about reopening the economy. All of those are signals to people that maybe we, you know, maybe the worst has passed. And in fact, we, we have been tracking that question. Do you think the worst is still to come or do you think the worst mm-hmm. is behind us? And we've seen a, a 27 percentage point drop in those saying the worst is still to come. So a lot of people still think the worst is coming, but far, far fewer than before. And that absolutely has an impact on the risk perception that people have, their willingness to, to keep you know, distancing, and then the increased pressure they're going to put on government to start opening up the economy. And so managing those perceptions and those expectations are really, really important at this moment, more than probably, uh, maybe even more than it, when this started, because now you, you want people to kind of continue to distance and the risk of a second spike um, without a vaccine, without a treatment, is always there, and and so managing those perceptions is really important. Yeah, you know, and that was that was where I was going next. Is that you ask Canadians about you know how long do you think it'll take to get back to normal, and, and the, the 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 data shows that that's not in that's not in line with when we could see a vaccine. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, I think first is we've seen a growing number of people expect this to be a long term thing. So. Um, At first, only about 15% of Canadians said, I think this is going to take six months or more. Now that's up to 38. But there's no real consensus. There's there's different perceptions out there. Some Canadians think this is, you know, we're going to be more or less back to normal in a few weeks. Um, More and more feel it's going to take at least two to three months. But your perception of how long you think it's going to take has a direct impact on your views about a whole other, uh, other range of things. And so we have seen this shift towards a longer time horizon but it's not there's no consensus out there and and i think that is something that that people both affects 
people's concern about this. If you're somebody, for example, who thinks this is going to be a six month long ordeal, that most of my life is not going to be the same for six months, you are much more concerned, you're much more worried, and your level of anxiety around the economic impact of this becomes much greater. And so how political leaders, how health officials, how business leaders and employers manage this, I think has a big effect on, on so much else about our anxiety, our mental health, and our willingness to, to get back to work, which at some point um, is going to happen. And I'm still not sure, you know, um, here in Quebec, um, where I just live in Ottawa, so Quebec on the other side of the river, they announced yesterday that they're going to start opening schools in, in two weeks. I've already heard from friends on the other side uh, of the river who have kids in school saying, I don't know if I'm going to be comfortable sending my kids back to school, uh. even if I can. And that's one of the things I'm most fascinated as as a researcher is the gap between being able to do something and being comfortable doing it. So just because governments start opening up the economy, some retailers might be allowed to, to be in business, some employers might be able to, 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 to increase the number of people in their, in, in their workplace, doesn't mean people are going to feel comfortable doing it. And that's where um, these perceptions about how long this is going to go on really really are dependent on your perception around when we're going to get a vaccine get a vaccine because that seems to me to be when this new normal um actually happens and so any time between then is really just a transition period and is is perhaps going to be the most important to the economic and social well-being of of everybody yeah you know so much of this is uh there's so many parallels running here. We, we hear this about the economic side of it. We're going to see a V-shaped recovery. As soon as we get back to normal, we open the economy up, it's going to be, we're going to be fine. We're going to see this huge boost in economic activity. I, I'm a little bit more skeptical. I, I feel that uh, just because my local restaurant opens doesn't mean I'm inclined to actually go go there. I think I think there's a staged process and I think a lot of Canadians kind of feel that way which which really it, it's hard because we've seen uh, the the shutdown of the restaurant trade have such dramatic impacts on our livestock sector. It's 50% of the business for dairy, for pork, for beef, for poultry. Uh, there's farmers across the country hoping that people go back to those restaurants, but I don't know just because you can doesn't mean you will. I, I'm with you. I'm much more bullish on this. I think that, you know, I look at public and these can change and these can change quite quickly. But right now, when we ask people, you know, how long before you're going to be comfortable getting on an airplane or going to a restaurant or going to a, a hockey game, um, large, large majorities of the country saying it's going to take some time. Um, I'm not even sure when I'm going to feel comfortable doing it because this is so unprecedented. People don't even know how to measure um, or assess the risk. Uh, of of some of these activities. And so I agree, just because you're allowing the economy to open doesn't mean it, it gets back to normal. So this is where, you know, if you do own a restaurant or you're in the food service business, I think you have to not assume that you're going to be able to get through this most acute period with some of the government supports that's there. You really have to be thinking about how do I run my business and serve people who, by the way, want the food I'm producing, uh, creating and, and making, just I don't necessarily want to eat it in your restaurant and, and start shifting their business models. And, and I think that is a, a much more uh, effective strategy yeah. because it, you're not going to be turning a switch on and all of a sudden hordes of people are going to be running and lining up to get into your restaurant. Even if they really want to, they may not feel comfortable doing so. Have you run any cross comparisons of what people think depending on the region they live in? So whether that's rural, urban, because, you know, we, we've seen most of the impact yeah. here being in urban areas as opposed to rural makes a lot of sense. People aren't as close to each other, that kind of stuff. Have you run any cross comparisons? Yeah, no, there is. There is a, a divide there. A very, very not not fundamentally different perspectives. I think people living in rural communities in Canada are still concerned about coronavirus. I think their expectation or the likelihood that they might get it is lower than those living in larger cities. And so the the risk in their minds is is lower as well. And so the desire to see things open up, we see it, we see it, uh, you know, across the country. I think, you know, the the urban rural divide has has come up even in how governments responded to this. People have often felt that, you know, the, the liberal government in Ottawa here has been too urban centric and not really focused on some of the concerns of the agricultural community or the, you know, the resource community who, who can, who are, who are facing different, uh, obviously structures in terms of how their businesses are set up, but also different circumstances. 
I do see some of those divides. And, and that's where I think from a political perspective, depending on the government in power in each province, that, um, and you see it in the United States as well, those power bases, if you're a more conservative-oriented government and, and you rely on support from more rural areas, you're going to feel a little bit more pressure to reopen the economy, get it moving, even if people in the cities that may not have voted for you and may never vote for you aren't necessarily comfortable doing it. And so it's managing both the political and the health and economic implications, I think, is the real challenge today for any political leader out there. Uh, well stated. Hey, David, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, Sean. Thanks.